Hello everyone. In the previous video, we continued our discussion on open quantum systems by talking about bipartite systems, the Schmidt decomposition, and state purification. In this lecture, we will generalize the notion of measurements for open systems using POVMs. When we first introduced measurements, we discussed them through the context of orthogonal measurements, where we choose some orthogonal basis to measure a state with respect to and then randomly project the state onto said basis state. Formally, we can define orthogonal measurements using projection operators. In particular, if you want to project onto a given vector, you simply join a ket and bra of this vector in this form to get a projection operator. If we now apply this operator to a given vector, all the orthogonal components will cancel, simply leaving us with the component of this vector times the vector itself. If we want to project onto a given subspace span by multiple linearly independent vectors, we can obtain a projector for the whole subspace by summing together projection operators for the orthonormal basis vectors that span the subspace. This means that if we sum together a set of orthogonal projectors for the entire Hilbert space, we simply get the identity matrix, since projecting a vector onto the Hilbert space within which it already resides will simply leave the state unchanged. Altogether, these projection operators have the following nice properties to be aware of. Okay, so how does measurement actually work? Well, suppose we want to measure a state psi in a given basis psi, whose measurement operators are defined as follows. With some probability pi, we will measure the state psi i, which effectively will project the state psi onto psi i, which we will represent by the following action. Note the additional factor of p sub i to the power of minus one half that is required to renormalize the state. Equivalently, if we instead have a density matrix rho, we represent measurement by conjugating rho by projection operators and then scaling the outcome by p sub i to the minus one power. But what exactly determines what these probability values pi are? Well, you may recall from the first few lectures that if we expand out a state vector psi in the xi basis, we have that the absolute value of the coefficient squared of a given psi vector gives us the probability of measuring this outcome. If our state is not given in the xi basis, we can of course compute this coefficient by simply taking the inner product of the state psi with the corresponding psi vector. Alternatively, we can also define p sub i as the expectation value of pi sub i with respect to psi. Consequently, for density matrices, we equivalently have that p sub i is defined as the trace of rho times pi sub i, since this is just the expectation value for density matrices. While we have discussed measurements entirely in the context of orthogonal projections up to this point, we can observe that we actually do not need to apply an orthogonal measurement directly to a given system in order to measure it. In particular, if our system A is, let's say, entangled with an auxiliary system B, which I'll refer to as the pointer, we can perform some kind of measurement on A simply by measuring B. As an example, suppose we start with a product state where qubit A is in state psi sub A, which effectively is just some arbitrary superposition between 0 and 1, and the pointer B is in the state 0. We then copy the state of A to B using a C0 gate to get the following state. Suppose I now move qubit A far away such that it is very difficult to perform any kind of operation on it. But now suppose I want to measure A in the 0 1 basis using the pointer qubit. How could this be possible? Well, recognizing that the measurement outcomes of A and B in the 0 1 basis are perfectly correlated, all we have to do is measure the pointer b, as a measurement outcome of 0 means that psi a is now 0 and likewise for 1. Consequently, we can perform some measurements on a by measuring b. However, a key difference to note here is that performing orthogonal measurements on b does not necessarily produce orthogonal measurements on a. For instance, suppose we measure b in the plus minus basis. Rewriting the unitary transformation from before in the plus minus basis, we get the following. Here, we can see that measuring plus means that psi a simply stays the same, while measuring minus means that psi a becomes alpha zero minus beta one. 
which are not orthogonal to each other, except for the case where the absolute value of alpha is equal to the absolute value of beta. Since the two states we project A onto are not orthogonal, we dub this type of measurement a generalized measurement. We will define this mapping that we performed as operator u. In other words, u acting on psi tensor root 0 gives us alpha 0 plus beta 1 over square root 2 tensor root 0 plus alpha 0 minus beta 1 over square root 2 tensored with 1. Writing this in terms of psi and operators, we can rewrite the expressions for qubit A as m plus acting on psi and m minus acting on psi, respectively, where m plus is simply 1 over root 2 times the identity operator, and mi is 1 over root 2 times the poly z operator. Within this framework, we are essentially saying that measuring either plus or minus for B gives us m sub plus or minus psi up to a normalization factor. Let's generalize this analysis to the case where B is an n-dimensional system. In particular, suppose that we apply some unitary u to our qubit A tensor 0, and we want to measure pointer B with respect to the B basis, giving us the measurement outcome B sub i. We can expand the output of u acting on psi A tensor with 0 B as the sum over i of m sub i psi tensored with B sub i. Since u is unitary and therefore norm-preserving, we have that the norm of this state is 1 for any psi, meaning that the sum of mi dagger mi over all b is always equal to the identity. It should be noted that measuring b with respect to the b basis is equivalent to the incomplete projection onto ab via i tensor the projection operator b sub i b sub i. Consequently, we had that outcome b sub i occurs with probability equal to the norm of m sub i acting on psi squared, meaning that the normalized post-measurement state is given as follows. The completeness relation requiring the sum of m i dagger m i to equal the identity ensures that the probabilities sum to 1. However, the post-measurement states are now no longer required to be orthogonal, meaning that measurements may not be repeatable now. Suppose we measure with respect to the B basis twice, and we are interested in the conditional probability of measuring BK the second time, given we measure BJ the first time. We can write this conditional probability as follows. The measurement is repeatable if and only if this probability is 1 when k equals j and 0 otherwise. However, this requires mk mj to be equal to the Kronecker delta of j and k times mj up to a phase, meaning that the measurements must be orthogonal. If we define e sub i equals m sub i dagger m sub i, we can see that for a density matrix rho, we can compute the probability of getting output b sub i by taking the trace of rho times e sub i. We can observe that these e sub i operators satisfy some nice properties. Firstly, these operators are Hermitian, since their conjugate transpose equals e sub i. Furthermore, since the expectation value of e sub i is a probability value, which is always non-negative, we have that the e sub i operators are positive semi-definite. Lastly, by the completeness condition we establish for m sub i, we have that the sum of all the e sub i's gives us the identity. By partitioning unity into these PSD operators, we have created a special measure known as a positive operator valued measure, or POVM. If you're not familiar with measures or measure theory, don't fret, as you won't need any further understanding going forward. We showed we can get a POVM by performing an orthogonal measurement on a pointer. However, we can also derive an orthogonal measurement from a given POVM as well. Suppose we are given a POVM defined by some collection of Hermitian PSD e sub i operators that sum to identity. We can always define m sub i equals u sub i times the square root of e sub i, where the square root is taken to be non-negative, such that m sub i dagger m sub i equals e sub i, where u sub i is an arbitrary unitary. This equation represents the polar decomposition of m sub i. 
Substituting these m sub i's into the mapping described previously then gives us the unitary that realizes the POVM we defined. Consequently, the post-measurement state is given as follows. Note that we have the freedom to choose u sub i however we so wish for each measurement outcome, meaning that we can simply discard the state and replace it by whatever freshly prepared state we wish to use. Altogether, POVMs give us a useful formalism for expressing generalized measurements, which are not necessarily orthogonal, that we will use quite extensively when discussing open quantum systems. In the next video, we will derive quantum channels from unitary time evolution. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.